What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm hitting you with some more classic Entitled Parent stories. Entitled Aunt thinks a $550 collectible console is worthless and I should just give it to my cousin because it's just a cheap old thing. So for some backstory, growing up I was always a PS guy but was always fascinated with Nintendo, mostly due to my love for the Pokemon anime, but I could never justify to my parents why I needed one. But recently I bought a Nintendo 64 Pikachu edition brand new never opens. For those who don't know, Pikachu Edition Nintendo 64 is a very rare console, but even rarer are the sealed versions. They currently go for $550 for the sealed and $250 for the open ones, and graded ones are $1,225. I was going to get mine graded before this. Recently, my aunt came over to my house because my cousin wanted to meet me. He's an amazing kid, definitely his dad's influence. His mother, on the other hand, is the exact definition of an entitled lady. For example, one day she locked herself in a room with rat poison and threatened to drink it if my other aunt and uncle didn't leave her house because she didn't want any guests that day. She's a very interesting creature to say the least. So I was out and I told them to take the keys from my neighbor and enter the house and just make themselves comfortable. After a short while, I came home and to my shock and horror and everything in between, I found my Nintendo 64 opened with a Pokemon cartridge in as both of them were playing. I asked in shock, what were they doing? And she said in the most monotonous tone, what, we're just playing? Steaming with anger, I asked her, do you realize what you've done? She said, what, it's not like he's gonna break it. And anyway, it's really old and weak anyway. You should get better things. At that point, I thought to myself, there's no point arguing with her since people like her just never understand. So I just gave up and played with my cousin. By the way, after playing for some time, I realized why people really like these retro Pokemon games. They're fun. After it was all said and done, it was time for her to leave. And as the kid was sat in the car, she asked me if I could give my console to my cousin as he really liked it. I straight up refused. She said, it's just the cheap old thing. You can buy like a million of them. Just give him this. I said that she could buy a stock Nintendo 64 for quite cheap, but I was not giving them this one. She said that it was my duty to give them this console as he is basically my brother. I refused and she huffed and puffed and said, fine, I'll buy it from you and handed me a 20 saying, keep the change. Yeah, this would not cover even the empty box, which itself is $60. And I told her that it was worth 550, but she just huffed and said, if I didn't want to give her this, I should have just said so. What? You said so in the beginning. Jesus, this logic is crazy. This finally broke me as I said, do you know that you just removed $200 worth of value from it, you should have paid me for this instead of offering me a 20 then huffing at me. Just because dad and uncle never tell you no, it doesn't mean I won't. Hearing this, she just stood there in shock. I think her brain was not able to register what just happened. As she sat in her car, she regained consciousness and shouted, I will tell your father about this. She rolled up her windows and left. Now people, no one likes her, not even my father. So that is the least of my worries. It's just good that I will never have to hear from her again. In many ways, that's almost worth the $200 I lost in value of the console. And here's a little update. The best thing happened. My dad called me and apparently my aunt complained about me. He said, it's okay. He will have a talk with me. And he called me and said this. You yelled at her for opening the game? Yup. Okay, she was wrong. Yes. So how's everything else? And normal conversation ensued. Now, while I don't know too much about Pokemon, to be honest, I do understand that there are a lot of collector's items out there, such as this game. Game, it seems that are worth a heck of a lot of money. Now, fair enough, your entitled aunt definitely didn't realize its value when she opened it, but that doesn't excuse her actions. Just because your cousin might have wanted to play, it doesn't mean she can touch something that's not hers. That is entitled parent logic, and it's just wrong. Moving on to our next story, I accidentally show an entitled kid gore. All right, so I was at my aunt's house while my mum was at a meeting. My cousin is very entitled, rarely disciplined, and very young. She's not absolutely horrible but there is a lot of stuff she gets away with that she shouldn't. To put it simply, I finished my homework and decided to finally look at the anime series I bought with my gift card money, Danganronpa. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat correctly. It was the first season of the anime, which was an adaptation of the first game, Trigger Happy Havoc. 
If you haven't played the game, watched the anime, or paid r slash Danganronpa a visit, basically it's that Makoto Naigi and 14 other students are trapped in Hope's Peak High School and can't leave. There is a way to leave and that is if someone kills someone else and gets away with it. After a murder, there is an investigation period and then a trial. Vote for the right killer and only the actual killer gets executed. Vote for the wrong person and everyone except the murderer gets killed and the killer gets to leave. Oh, and apparently the one in charge is a black and white bear named Monokuma. So anyway, I finished the first episode and was on to the second. The first episode was the characters learning about their situation and the rules of Monokuma's twisted game. There was also the scene with the motive videos and Meizono freaks out. After that episode was done, I moved on to the second episode and was well into it and it was after Negi and Sayaka Meizono decided to switch rooms. My cousin gets close and asks to watch it with me. I close my computer and say, no, this show has a content advisory and it is not for kids. But I can watch it, I'm a big girl. No, you're not. You don't want to get involved in this. And then my aunt comes up to us. Why aren't you letting your cousin watch? This show is not for little kids. It has content advisory. Is it animated? Yes, but... Then it's a cartoon, and cartoons are for kids like her. But this one isn't. Do it! My aunt then goes on a spiel about how it's her house and I should listen to her. I reluctantly agree and everything is going smoothly. So we get to the scene where Nagi wakes up and introduces the fact that every morning everyone agreed to eat breakfast together as a way to settle their nerves. I thought it would be a pretty nice scene. She immediately starts asking the names and I enjoy it. The boy with the white coat and black hair is Ishimaru. The girl with the yellow eyes and green shirt is Fujisaki. What about her? She points to Ayo Asahina. That's Asahina. But who's that weird person? She points to Sakuru Okami. That's Okami. Why is she like that? I don't know. And then we see the next characters enter. Mondo Owada, Yamadu Himifui, and Junku Enoshima. My cousin says that Himifui kind of looks funny and I agree. And then we see the scene where Okami asks why Enoshima looks different and we see Enoshima deliver the reason. Wait a minute, Enoshima does look different. Go back. So I pause and go back to the scene with Enoshima's magazines. Hold on, she looks different. They don't have those face dots here, but in the scene with Enoshima's response, Enoshima has the dots. I look back at the scene and it's true. My cousin notices the lack of freckles. I tell her that it's just probably Photoshop and we go on with the episode. The next characters to enter are Kyoko Kiragiri, Leon Kawata, Celestia Ludenberg, Toko Fukawa, and Yasuhiro Hagakure. Ishimaru remarks that someone is still missing and those people are Byaku- These names are confusing me. Those people are Byaku Ya Togami and Maizono. And then Togami enters the scene. Is that Maizono? No, that's Togami. Himufui remarks that Maizono is supposed to be part of the early group. Naigi then freaks out and runs out to check on Maizono. This is the part I didn't see coming. Naigi enters the room Maizono is in, notices it isn't locked, and notices the mess. My cousin asks if everything is okay, and I said, I don't know if it is, and then we see Maizono's corpse in the bathroom. Fully clothed, don't get the wrong idea. But Maizono has been stabbed in the stomach with blood everywhere. The blood was pink, but the audio and the camera movements made it extremely harrowing. At this point, my cousin screams and I shut my laptop. My aunt hurries over. Cousin, are you alright? Holy cow, Maizono's dead. Why did you do that? I swear it wasn't my fault, I didn't see it coming. What did you show her? We saw a dead body, aunt. You said it was. I warned you. My cousin is crying and my aunt comforts her. I don't play on my laptop for the next five minutes. My cousin later comes up to me saying that I shouldn't feel too guilty and that she should have listened when I told her it wasn't for kids. When my mum comes to pick me up, my aunt says that I deliberately showed my cousin a gory image. I try to defend myself, but it is Nihil. When we get in the car, my mum asks me what really happened. Well, the thing is, I warned her about it, that it's not for people under the age of 13, but she wanted me to go on. At first, my cousin and I were having a good time, and then we saw a formerly unstabbed character named Sayoko Maizono dead in the shower. Were they naked? No, they were not. They were fully clothed, but there was a lot of pink blood everywhere. Pink blood? Yes, pink. It's somewhat magenta, but nonetheless pink. You said this was animated, right? Yes, I mean, I knew about the content advisory and we were having a good time for a while. I guess you really didn't see it coming. Well, you won't get any punishments from me. 
At our next gathering, my aunt didn't demand me to share my entertainment. Well, that's probably a good thing. You know, I think your aunt should probably take a lesson in anime. A lot of it is probably not for younger children. But then again, you could say the same with animation. A lot of that isn't for younger children as well. A load of animation and cartoon stuff is for adults these days, as a lot of adults enjoy that form of content. It's definitely not for the younger audience. But yeah, I think your aunt needs to educate herself a little bit and also not be so entitled next time. Anyway, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far into the video and you aren't yet subscribed, what are you doing? Go and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell whilst you're at it. Also, click on the screen right away for some more Reddit content and I will see you all soon with some more stories.